flower convention over there, and we baptized 33 in the name of Jesus Christ. And the, <clears throat> the very following week, we was in Portsmouth, Virginia for the combined anniversary of the different churches there. We baptized 37 in the name of the Lord Jesus. And last week, last week, we were back in Detroit where we started a new church there. And we had over, over 300 people that was jam-packed and <clears throat> we baptized 42 last week in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Houston, I'm here in your wicked city. You have a lot of cotton candy fellas down here. <laughs> Amen. And this is Joel Alstein place, isn't it? Isn't Jake somewhere down here? He's in Dallas. It's still Texas. A lot of people say Pastor Jennings don't have no love. Believe me, if I didn't love you, you think I would be traveling like I am? What preacher is over the air getting threats for telling the truth, not on the church salary, not getting paid, got a job to take care of his family, not a millionaire, don't drive a Rolls Royce, don't drive a Bentley, try to go from state to state, country to country, town to town, standing up for God and willing to fight everything under the sun. The preachers today, the preachers today are not willing to stand up for God, and a lot of them are your pastor. You know I'm telling the truth. A lot of them are your pastor, and your pastor may be your husband, may be your father, your uncle, your slap-happy grandpappy. Family churches, where the wife is the first lady and huh, the daughter is the treasurer and the son is the assistant pastor, one of them family business churches. I am here in Houston with God's word by God's permission to put you on the right track with the Bible. The way the churches are now, we have gotten away from the Bible. I'm not over the air to make friends. I'm not traveling to be popular. God is coming. And if you know anything about the Bible, God always send men to warn you. I'm just a warner. Don't care what you own. I don't care if you're so rich. You have a 24 karat gold toilet. That's rich, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't matter how big of a house you have, when you was born, you're going out the same way you came here. If you came here without anything, you're going to die without anything. God is proving to the world, you don't own nothing. Look at what's going on in California, those flames hit the Malibu section with all those millionaire mansions. The flames didn't go up to the mansions and say, oh, too rich. <laughs> flames take your mansion, your yacht, your bank account, your money, everything. God wants the world to know you belong to him. Are you listening to the old man? Everybody in here, black, white, brown, yellow, red, you belong to God. Don't look for America to straighten out your problem. America is a problem. Don't look to Donald Trump. You'll go to hell looking at him. We only got one deliverer, one savior, one fighter, yeah. one truth. And Jesus is he. Right. Are you listening? Yeah. 
brothers and sisters of Houston, what is your religion? You can't say it's holiness if you're still in the Baptist church. Am I right? You cannot declare yourself to be holy if you're still in a Pentecostal church. You cannot declare yourself to be holy if you're in a non-denominational church. You cannot declare yourself to be holy and you claim you're apostolic. Let's come on back to Bible. That's right. <laughs> Let's come on back to Bible. Hallelujah. I'm glad for this program because it's making thousands and thousands and thousands to look at church different. Wow. You stop just going to church, jumping and shouting and falling out, haven't you? You stop falling for the fake healing meeting where someone come and push you on the floor and you look back and say they're going to catch you. Amen. Stop falling for the blessing plan. The $30,000 prayer line and $100,000 prayer line. You see, one thing about the truth of God, once your understanding come open, it's like a light go off. And you no longer, you no longer go to church going along to get along. That's why we encourage people of every race in the world, ask your bishop questions. And I guarantee your bishop don't want you to ask him questions. And when you do ask him questions, he get offended. And then he say, well, don't you worry about that. You go pray. God says, God say, don't, 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 don't question God. God ain't never said that. I ask God whatever I want. He know all things. Are you listening? Church is the biggest racket. Bigger than the mafia. And worse than the mafia. What make it worse than the mafia? Churches have threatened your eternal life. They have ruined us in this life and they are hindering us to be with God in eternity so I'm calling for the world and for everybody pack up and leave your churches and let these pulpit Cadillac driving bums get a job and go to work or go to hell Preachers don't like me telling people, stop going to church. I have preachers all across the country fighting me about this. <laughs> you ain't got no Bible passage yet and telling people to stay home. Mm -hmm. Give me the book of Kings. In 1 Kings chapter 22. Oh, you're already ready, huh? Amen. <laughs> I got my guns loaded. Yeah, amen. Now, we're going to read this. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to dive into the Bible. Mm -hmm. But before we dive into the Bible, I'm going to give you the opportunity that your church will never give you. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. You can question me about anything you heard me preach. This is being televised here down here in Houston. Amen. You can question me about anything that you ever heard me preach. Mm -hmm. What you don't like, what you hate, what you don't understand and what you disagree with, what your mama told you, what your second wife told you, what your third husband is presently telling you. Amen. And question me about what your bishop is teaching. Mm -hmm. Don't you go to the church and keep tossing some man some money and then find out 20 years later all that liar did was lie to you. That's right. The reason why folks say, Pastor Jennings don't preach with love. That's because you've been spoiled by Joel Austin. Or you've been spoiled by T.D. Snakes. 
And these other mega pimp preachers. Hmm. Read your Bible. God have never, since he been God, sent a man to justify sin, sent a man who's scared to speak against sin, and God never sent a man to walk hand in hand with the conduct of the world. That's right. A man of God always stood separate from the world. That's right. That's why when you read the Bible, a man of God always was a mock man to be killed by the world. That's right. They don't want to kill Joel Austin. <laughs> they don't want to kill Jakes. These men ain't preaching nothing. Where somebody want to kill them? No. No. You got to stand for something. That's why they got contracts out on my head all around America. And I've told the world, I'm not running. Mm -hmm. I'm an easy man to find. Mm -hmm. I don't care if someone in this room today, in this auditorium in Houston, I take the Bible and take care of you too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I take care of you. I take care of your mama. I take care of your pastor. I take care of your bishop. Yeah. What I'm preaching comes from God. Oh, yeah. And when God make a preacher, God have never made a scared preacher. That's, right. That's why the devil hate us so bad. Because we are determined, God knows. In these last days, these are the last days, brothers and sisters. Oh, yes. If you don't believe me, look at the streets of Houston and the rest of the world. They're killing each other, raping each other, lying, murdering. Sons is killing their own father. Daughters have no respect for their mother. They go in the church by millions, claiming they're Christians and don't have a clue who God is. That's right. Listen at this, brothers and sisters. First Kings chapter 22, we start at verse 16. Follow me. And the king said unto him, and How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing? That which is true in the name of the Lord. All right. And he said, I saw all Israel. I saw all Israel. Scattered, scattered upon the hills. Upon the hills. Sheep that have not a shepherd. That's exactly the way people are now. They are wandering from religion to religion to religion to religion. Like sheep that have no shepherd. Like sheep that don't have a preacher. Anything is a preacher now. Yeah. Get under some spell. They, 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 they windshield wipers start making noise. You know, you know, when you was a child, you hear windshield wipers make, and you start saying, like, if you listen to it long enough, you think the windshield wipers talking to you. Hmm. That's exactly the way some men end up in the pulpit. Some windshield wipers, go preach, go to preach, go preach. Before you know it, <laughs> before you know it, some windshield wiper bishop jumped in the pulpit. That's right. Glory to God, glory to God. I saw all Israel. I saw all Israel. Scattered on the hill, on the hill like sheep without have, a shepherd. And the Lord said. No, Jennings said it. The Lord said. No, Pastor Jennings said it. And the Lord said. Tell Houston what the Lord said. These have no master. You don't have no preacher. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Go home. Amen. The Lord said. Look at the type of preachers you have here. Mm. Houston is in the same mess as all the other cities. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of honest, sincere people who really want to be saved. Right. There are sincere people that mean to go back with God, but the preachers are in your way. That's right. That's right. That's why the preachers don't want you to listen at this message. They say, don't you listen to that Pastor Jennings. He's too militant. He ain't got no love. <laughs> He's a cult leader. Amen. <laughs> they say I'm a cult leader because we preach you only can have one wife. Right. I'm a cult leader. They say I'm a cult leader because we preach according to the Bible. God never called and sent a woman to preach the gospel and never will. Mm -hmm. They say I'm a cult leader because I preach against racism and preach against all so-called white churches and all so-called black churches and a white Jesus and a black Jesus. They say I'm a cult leader. Go ahead. 
They say I'm a cult leader because we don't believe in bowing head and raising hands and claim you accepting Christ where you are. No, you're not. Oh, no. If you from the hood, anytime you're in this position, something went wrong. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Yeah. Anyone that got good sense know if I'm like this, something going wrong. <laughs> I'm in trouble, God knows. Hallelujah. Lord, thank God, are you getting what I'm telling you? And the Lord said. Who said it? The Lord said. What kind of church are you going to, Houston? Hmm. Think of it. You got one soul. One. Come on, Pastor. And you better save that one while you have it. Yeah. This playing church. When I came up, my mother used to tell me and my father used to tell me, church is a light to the world. Not now. Mm. The world is a light to the church. Yeah. Everything the sinner got going on is in the church. That's right. You got the churches here in Houston where you got your praise dancers. Yeah. A bunch of young boys and young girls all with uniforms on doing the same dance they do in the club. Yeah. Same thing they do in the club. That's they right. do in your church. That's right. Church twerking. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what church has become now. Yeah. Church dating service. Mm -hmm. A Christian comedian. Oh, Lord. What the sinner had, church imitated. What in the world church have came to? That's right. Now, if I was raised in a dirty atmosphere all my life, it become normal to me. So being clean would be abnormal. If I've been told lies year in, year in, year out, when someone finally come tell me the truth, truth would be abnormal to me, so I'm going to fight against that which is right. And I'm going to cling to that which is wrong. That's right. That's why many folk have fought and are still fighting all around the world. And I tell the folk, we give you a chance to fight. You don't know. All you got to do is listen. When you start listening, your understanding will come open. Oh, yes. And you'll find yourself making your exodus out of the Baptist and the Methodist and the Presbyterian. Think of it. These, re these religions don't even exist in the Bible. That's right. Imagine. <laughs> you've been in the church for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Your parents the mortgage they house is to help build some of these churches. Supporting a religion that nobody in the Bible professed of being. That's right. Enough to make you angry to find out you've been lied to all these years, don't it? That's right. How many here go to Baptist church? Raise your hand. We're going to have a Houston down to earth family discussion. Raise your hand. All my Baptist brothers, come on, raise your hand. Don't be scared. Uh, all right. How many here? Catholic. Went to Catholic church. Raise your hand. How many here? Non-denominational. How many here? Pentecostal. How many here? Apostolic. How many here? Lutheran. Mormons. Muslim. Hebrew Israelite. African Methodist Episcopal, AME. Hmm. Come on. <laughs> Scientology. Hmm. Now think of it. God is the only wise God, is he not? Amen. Do you think the one God is going to give us an open buffet a variety of religions and then give you the chance to choose what you want God is not a fool that's right I'm surprised at the fools that's right God Almighty told everybody in the world what to be that's right and the preachers if they get their nose out of the cemetery school and stop studying theology and philosophy, philosophy and worrying about being a doctor of divinity mm -hmm. 
and come on down to Bible and be holy. That's it. Everybody in the world supposed to be the same thing. Same thing. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. Did he not? Amen. And when he had his disciples, he had his 12 apostles, he sent them all out preaching the same thing. They didn't start 12 different religions. Where all these religions come from? It came from the devil out of hell. That's right. And we're going to beat it back to hell from where it come. That's right. So Houston, this is your opportunity to come out. People have been writing me, Pastor Jennings, please come to Houston. One woman, when she heard the announcement that we're coming to Houston, she emailed me and said, I prayed for 10 years for you to come to Houston. She said, praise the Lord, my prayers is answered. Now, before I dive into the Bible, I'm going to take a few questions. A few questions, Houston. I'm going to just get a few questions. And, uh, and I'll pick up any subject you want and be considerate of others that may have questions so your question don't be too long. I answer your question, rip it to shreds with the Bible, then put you back together and send you on your way. I will not give you my opinion, my idea, my thought, my philosophy. I'm going to hold you down with Bible. That way when you get mad, you get mad at the Bible and not at Pastor Jennings. All right, first question. Raise your hand so I can keep it moving. My brother had his hand up first. All right, who had their hand up? My sister back here? All right, speak a little. All right, go ahead, sister. Speak on the rapture. On the rapture? Yeah. Yes, I can speak on the rapture. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians, if you will. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's move quick. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to start reading at verse uh, 50. All right, let's move fast. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 50. All right. Now this I say, brethren. This I say, brethren. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> There's a lot of preachers now trying to say Jesus is walking around in heaven with a flesh and blood body. Yeah. The Bible speaks plain. Here. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot. God don't want no flesh and blood up there. That's why he even translated Enoch and he translated Elijah. That's right. He don't want this mortal body up there in heaven mm -hmm. because a mortal body is a temporary body. Right. The Bible said that which is seen is temporal, but that which is not seen is eternal. Mm -hmm. So you got to repent of your sins. If you want to go back with Jesus, this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You got to repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll get back to that. Right. You must receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues that the Spirit of God give utterance. I'll get back to that. That's right. Yeah, that's the new birth. That's the way you're born again. And the Holy Ghost put you in the church. After you're born into the church, there's a doctrine, which is the doctrine of the apostles, which is the teaching of Jesus, which are the rules and regulations to govern men and women after you're born in the church. That's right. Now... In order for you to be ready when Jesus come to make this first resurrection, you got to continue steadfastly in the teaching of Jesus. That's right. And you can't do that unless you got a preacher who believe in the teaching of Jesus. Amen. And if you got a preacher that believe in the teaching of Jesus, he will enforce biblical protocol. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Now this I say, brethren. This I say, brethren. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. Neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. Yes. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now when Jesus come, now I don't know when he's coming. Mm -hmm. The Bible don't give no date, no year. It just know that he's coming. That's right. And when he come, the Bible said, every eye shall see him, mm -hmm. and those that pierce him shall see him. Mm -hmm. And when he appear, he's going to present unto himself a glorious church. The church is those that have repented of their sins and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Mm. The building is not the church. Right. The building is simply the container that housed the church and the building take on the title of the church. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Mm. So when the Lord come to present unto himself his glorious church, his church is also called the bride. Yeah. And the bride is the people of God. That's when the marriage will take place. Oh. The Lord, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah. Now, I, I, I hope I don't get too deep for you. Mm -hmm. But when the church is resurrected to meet the Lord in the air, that's when the millennium will start. Right. The term millennium means a thousand years. And during the time of the thousand year reign, 
Bless God, the devil, the father of the wicked, shall be bound for that time. While he's bound for that time, then there will be peace on earth. Nobody will be able to commit any evil while Satan is in bondage. While after the thousand years is over, the Bible said the devil shall be loose. Thank God to go to the four corners of the earth to gather them together to battle, to gather Gog and Magog, which are the descendants of Noah, to battle. That's the last battle or war to take place on the earth, which is called the Battle of Armageddon. But if you want to escape all those troubles and make the first resurrection, repent of your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive ye the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and obey the word of God and come out of these fake churches that you're in. That's it. All right? Yeah. All right, next question. Hallelujah. Come on, let's move quick, brothers. If you got microphones, let's move quick, please. Uh, Pastor Jennings. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me in the New Testament where did the apostles teach that uh, you're cursed with a curse? If you don't tithe. Where the apostles preached it? They taught that. Jesus or the apostles. All right. In the New Testament. Give me the book of Hebrews quickly. Amen. Let's get Melchizedek. In the book of Hebrews chapter 7. All right. And we'll start reading at verse 1. All right. For this Melchizedek, king of Salaam. And uh, then we'll go back to the book of Malachi also. Right. right. All right. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 1. Yes. This, for this Melchizedek, king of Salaam, uh -huh. priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king, yes. and blessed him, uh -huh. to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, uh -huh. first being by interpretation king of righteousness. Now what you're quoting is the Old Testament in the book of Malachi, I believe, yes. when the Bible said, will a man rob God? Rob God, that's right. And uh, of course, a man will rob God, a man been robbing God since man been here. Malachi chapter 3. But what? the mistake that preachers have made, they just focus on time only right. and gets focused on that only but the prophet Malachi didn't just deal with tithes he dealt with tithes and offering that's right real quick Malachi chapter 3 we're at verse 8 Amen. will a man rob God yes he will amen will a man rob God and again I say yes he will Yet ye have robbed. The Lord said you done it. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? But many of us play ignorant and want to ask, well, how in the world did we rob God? And how did God say it was done? In tithes. And what else? And offering. Not just one thing. That's right. Not just one thing. Tithes. And offering. And offering. Your question was, well, where did uh, God preach it? Or where did Jesus preach it? Or where did the apostles preach it? Mm -hmm. Well, in order for it to be changed, then God will give the re God would have given the apostles a revelation to preach against it. That's right. But there is no New Testament precept where the apostles or Jesus preached against it. Mm -hmm. And if the apostles or Jesus didn't preach against it, don't you hear Jesus said all things must be fulfilled mm -hmm. that are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, the and this is the prophets, the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Mm -hmm. All right, read will, quick. Will a man rob God? Uh -huh. Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Yes. In tithes and offerings. Uh -huh. You are cursed with a curse. You are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So you just can't look at where you just say tithes, he said tithe and offering. And offering. And offering. You're cursed with the curse if you don't do neither. That's right. All right. You're cursed with the curse for you have robbed me, uh -huh. even this whole nation. Yeah. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. And, and the storehouse is not the preacher's pocket. That's right. And the storehouse is not the preacher's house. That's right. You see, when we pay tithes and offerings, that's what keeps the broadcast going. That's how churches got built. That's how we clothe naked folk, and that's how we feed hungry uh, with tithing and offering. We have many hundreds and hundreds of poor brothers and sisters all around the world, uh, in foreign countries, in India, in Africa. We buy land so they can grow food, so they can have something to eat. All of that fall in obeying God. How do we get that land? Through tithing and offering. And offering. And offering. Bring ye all the tithes. I had one man say, you're the first preacher I ever met that do right by God's money. Mm -hmm. I'm scared of God. Amen. I'm scared to death of God. Yeah. And you wouldn't get me to go to hell over a half a penny. All right. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, uh -huh. that there may be meat in my yes. house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. If I will not open you the windows God of heaven. God say, I will open you up, I will open up windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. God say, if you do this, he'll give you a blessing. That there shall not be all right, give me the book of Hebrew quickly now. Mm -hmm. 
Let's get it quick, because I got a lot of questions I want to get. Back in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and we're still at verse 1. Get at verse 1 quickly. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High now, God. Now, Melchizedek was God. Yeah. Someone say Melchizedek was God? Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone say, how can you say that? The Bible said he had no beginning of days. If you have no beginning, that means you always was. Then the Bible said he had no end of life. When it says you have no end of life, that means you always will be. And he said, you don't have no father, mm -hmm. no mother. Without the scent, meaning you ain't got no relatives, no beginning, no ending. That's God. There's only one king of righteousness. That's right. And ain't no man that's king of righteousness. That's God. That's right. Real quick. For this Melchizedek, king of Salaam, priest of the Most High God. Yes. Who made Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Yes. First being by interpretation king of righteousness. And you got to remember, we're the children of Abraham by faith, and we're still giving Melchizedek, which is God Almighty, a tenth. All right. First being by interpretation king of righteousness. And after that also king of Salaam. There's only one king of Salaam, meaning king of peace. Which is king of peace. It ain't it. That's, that's God. Without father. Wait a minute. God don't have no father. Without father. God don't have no father because he is father. Without mother. God don't have no mother. Without the sin. God don't have no relatives. Having neither beginning of days. He has no beginning that means he always was and he have no ending. He always will be. That's God. That's right. Oh, yes. We still pay tithing. We still pay offering. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. Come on, you brothers with the microphone. Let's move quick, please. Hey, greetings, Pastor. Uh, my question is about honor of mother and father. Yes. Uh, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm tearing for the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And uh, Acts 5.32 says that the Holy Ghost is given to those who obey God. Yes. Now, the fifth commandment is honor thy mother, thy father. Mm -hmm. My mother and father divorced. They remarried. Now they want me to go spend time with each of them in, in the family. If I'm under that roof uh -huh. and I'm supposed to honor my mother and my father, how can I do that if light... It's supposed to not have fellowship with darkness, but at the same time, I'm supposed to obey that commandment. How do I do that? When the light don't have fellowship with darkness, that means them that live holy don't indulge in what darkness indulge in. Jesus said, do not after their works. Do not after their works. You can still honor your father and your mother, but you don't condone what your father and mother do. That's evil. Because the Bible said, let's get the nigh father and the nigh mother. Let's move quick, son. My God, man, you got to move quick because I'm way ahead of you. The Bible said you got to deny yourself. Luke. Let's get the book of Luke. Chapter 14 and at verse 26. Move fast. If any man come to me. If any man come to Jesus. And hate not his father. That hate. Hate. That means you got to hate the lifestyle that they live in when their lifestyle contradict the lifestyle that God requires. Mm -hmm. If the father got a second uh, wife and yet his wife is still living, you still honor and respect him as your father. But you can't call that woman mom. Right. Nor can you call that woman by the last name of your fathers right. because every time that woman use your father last name the woman lie because your father's wife is still living yeah. now every time if your father name is mr black and mr black divorced mrs black and then mr black marry miss brown and now Miss Brown take on the title Miss Black. Miss Brown is a liar because the real Mrs. Black is still living. And every time Mrs. Br Miss Brown used the name of Mr. Black, she lied. So you call her uh, by her real name. Uh, how are you, Miss Brown? And if she complained to your father, he disrespect me, just tell your father, no, I didn't respect her. No, no, pop, 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 mama's still living. She's still your wife, and uh, I got to respect God's law first. So don't be ashamed to let your father and mother know how you stand on biblical principle, and you present that biblical principle with humility and respect. Don't argue with them. Don't fight with them. But you got to hate the lifestyle. Real quick. If any man come to me and hate not his if father. If any man come to Jesus and hate not his father. And mother. Mother. And wife. Wife. And children. Children. And brethren. Brother. And sisters. Look at Jesus. He ain't got no respect the person, do he? Amen. What else? Yeah, and his own life You got to hate your own life also. You cannot be my disciple. Glory take God, you cannot be his follower. All right, next question. The name Jesus. Yes. I personally believe in the blood of Jesus because mm -hmm. I personally use that. Um, but I hear that it's a lot of different other names for Jesus. So I want to get 
more clarity about that. All right, let's see how many names that God had. Give me the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's see how many names do God Zechariah, have. Zechariah, chapter 14. Listen, follow me in the book of Zechariah, the 14th chapter. And at the ninth verse. All right, Zechariah 14 and 9, follow me and get me. I want to soak you a little. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day. In that day. Shall there be one Lord. And how many names is one Lord going to have? And his name one. Two. One. Three. One. Four. One. Five. One. Six. His name one. Somebody is a liar. That's right. Now let me help you out, my sister. What is your name, sister? Um, Mrs. Venus Tamer. What's that? Venus Tamer. Tamer? Now, now, if you go to a foreign country, they will say your name in their language, but it won't take away from the fact it's your name. That's right. In Spanish, my Spanish brothers and sisters, how do you say the name Jesus in your language? Jesus, correct? It's still Jesus. Still Jesus. The Hebrews say Yeshua. The reason why they say Yeshua because one, there is no J's in the Hebrew grammar. Joshua is pronounced in Hebrew Yeshua. Right. Yeshua is the name Jesus in Hebrew. That's right. Jacob had a brother named Esau. In Arabic, Esau is pronounced Isa. Mm -hmm. Isa. In Arabic, the name Isa is Jesus. Jesus. So if I say Isa, that's Jesus. Hashua, that's Jesus. Jesus, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Whatever language. You see, God is an intelligent God. He know everybody that don't have one language. In the book of Hebrew. Listen at this quickly. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, and at verse 13. Acts 26, 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. At midday, O king, I saw a light from heaven. Above the brightness of the sun. And what? Shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Uh -huh. And when we were all fallen to the earth. We fell to the earth. I heard a voice speaking I heard a me. voice speak to me. And saying in the Hebrew tongue. You see, he spoke to Paul in Hebrew. Saying, so, 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 why persecutest, so thou why me? persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. Now, a blind person would say, you see that, Pastor Jennings? Even the Lord spoke to Paul in Hebrew. Why would the Lord talk to Paul in any other language? Right. Why would the Lord talk to Paul in German if Paul was a Jew? That's right. God ain't going to talk to me in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm English. Yeah. And if God got a message for me, it's going to come in my language. That's right. Why? So I can understand it. For that message to be profitable, and I'll walk away with the understanding, if I'm Arabic and don't know no Hebrew, why would God talk to me in the Hebrew tongue? That's right. Paul was a Benjamite. Mm -hmm. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. So the Lord spoke to him in the, in Hebrew, the Hebrew tongue, tongue and said, Saul, Saul, I persecutest thou me. And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. So in Hebrew, the Lord said, I'm Yeshua. Yeshua. But in English, he said, I'm Jesus. So yes, we preach in the name of Yeshua. We preach in the name of Isa. We preach in the name of Jesus. We preach in the name to the English folk, Jesus. Be known unto you all. Yeah. That's right. Don't you hear Jesus told his apostles, go ye into all the world. You think the Lord going to give them a command like that if everybody spoke one language? That's right. He's not going to do that. No. My God, he's going he to give the apostles, hey, hey, give me the 19th chapter of the book of Psalms, if you will. Yeah. The Bible says uh, there is no speech. Mm -hmm. No language. Where their voice is not heard. Now, I want to show you this. Psalms 19, we'll start at verse 1. Listen. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. And, and the, the firmament, firmament showeth his, show his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech. There is no speech. No language. No language. Where their voice is not heard. Everywhere the apostles went, they brought it in all type of languages and all type of speeches so people can get the word of God. Their line is going out to all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. 
word. Hey, whatever your language is, God have a way of bringing his name and his word to you. Right. All right, next question. Oh, it's me? Come on, brother. Oh, all right. Um, in Acts chapter 16, verse 14, what did it mean when the Lord opened the heart of Lydia when she attended to what Paul spoke? Yes. All right, Acts. Chapter 16 and at verse 14. Uh -huh. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, uh -huh. of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, yes. heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. The Bible said that her heart was opened. Open. Then the Bible gave you the reason. Which worship God heard us. Yes. Which the Lord opened. And that she attended. She attended. Unto the things which were spoken of Paul. You see, the apostle Paul was preaching the word of God and Lydia's heart got open. And when her heart came open, she accepted. That's Let right. you know, in order for the word of God to be profitable unto you, you've got to receive it with the open heart. Open when you have an open heart, you will submit yourself to it and you will obey. That's right. Whose heart the Lord opened. Who opened it? The Lord opened. God can move on me to preach it, but God got to deal with your heart. That's right. Eh? That's right. God can move on me to tell you what he said, but God does the work on your heart. Mm -hmm. My God, when the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when he work on your heart, I won't have no problems getting you in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And when she don't, was baptized. Don't you, don't you hear the word of God say, the Bible says, when they heard this, they were pricked. The they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he commanded all of them to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So when Lydia's heart came open, that means she was receptive to God everlasting word. And I'm pretty sure that's why y'all here today, because your heart came open. Oh, yeah. Amen. If your heart wasn't open, you wouldn't be here. All right, next question. Um, Pastor, before I'm baptized, I wanted to know how often does God allow us to repent of the same sin before he's just kind of done with us over it? <laughs> how often? Not the same question that they asked Jesus. Yeah. How many times do I forgive my brother? <laughs> That's why the Bible says he's long suffering to us with. How many times do I forgive my brother? Jesus began to tell him when seven times, seven times, seven pass over. So as long as you live and there's mercy, God will forgive you as long as you fall on the mercy of God. But at the same time, we don't want to become comfortable in our sins and use God's mercy for granted because a lot of preachers teach that God's mercy can't run out. Yes, it can. Yes, can. The Bible said God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. I read verse 21. Listen. Then came Peter to him. And said, Lord, Lord, how shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Yes. Till seven times. Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him. Notice Peter threw out one number. To, 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 till do seven, do times. seven times. Seven times. All right. Jesus saith unto him. Jesus said to him. I say not unto thee until seven times. No, not just seven times. But until seventy times seven. Until seventy times seven. Times seven. So when you go before God and you do fall in sin. Now. True repentance is not just saying I'm sorry. Anybody can say I'm sorry. True repentance is when your heart is convicted. And when your heart is convicted, you want to surrender what you're doing. Now, one thing about sin, sin work in favor of your flesh. That's why, a lot of, that's why you struggle with it so much and you don't, want to, you don't want to give it up. And you got to have a preacher that constantly work on your flesh. And that's why a lot of folk don't like Pastor Jennings because I'm an anti-flesh killer. That's right. Eh? Yeah. We come along with the Bible and break up your folly ground and break up your sin and speak against your wickedness. You want to shoot dice. You want to shoot pull. You want to smoke weed for municipal purposes. That's right. <laughs> eh? yeah. 
Amen. You want to uh, dye your hair and wear somebody else's hair and wear your fake eyelashes and wear ankle chains and lipstick and be homosexuals and men marry men and women marry women and play the lottery and men with long hair like women. Yeah. You want to do that. Here I come with the lawnmower of the scripture cutting every weed of wickedness with God everlasting word. You got to have a preacher. When you got a preacher that stay on you, when God's word, it, it, it helps you to overcome. But when you follow these sugar daddy preachers that got a congregation of sugar babies, you become comfortable in your sins and you are dying, go to hell, God knows. Now I rejoice. What is that? Now I rejoice. Yes, chapter and verse. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 9. I rejoice. Not that she were made sorry. Not that she was made sorry. But that she sorrowed to repentance. God, that she sorrowed unto repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner. You was made sorry after a godly manner. That you might receive damage by us in nothing. That you may receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Worketh repentance to what direction? To salvation. Ah. Amen. Everything in here wants to be sorry about their sins. Then let's get an understanding. Once you repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be perfect. No. That's why you got to be taught. That's right. There's a lot of things we don't know is wrong. Right. It's like a child. No child, no woman came into the delivery room and that child walked out of her womb. Come on. No. Come on, Me and my wife got seven kids. None walked out. If they would have walked out, I would have walked out. <laughs> yeah. And then if you look at the development of a child, what is the first thing that form of a child in the womb of the mother? It's the head. What is the first thing that comes from the womb of the woman? And the rest of the body need help. The birth of the child represents the condition of man. Come on. Come on, man. The first thing that we need deliverance from is our mind. Are you listening? That's why the word of God work on reshaping the mind. You change a person's thought process, it'll change their heart. Once the mind change, heart change. Once heart change, your physical behavior change. And when your physical behavior change, you will show forth a pattern of good works. Right. So now the mind is the first thing that needs to be delivered from the sinful world of darkness. And as a child need help to bring the rest of the body from the womb of the woman, we need help as we need deliverance to come from the womb of sin. As the doctor is there to help the child to come out, God is there to help us to come out of sin. Are you listening? Yeah. All right, next question. Hey, my question is, uh, if a man divorces his first wife and marries his second wife, and his first wife dies, do he have to remarry his second wife? All right. Let's get the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, if you please. Romans chapter 7, we're starting at verse 1. Yes. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. That what? How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. The question is, when you got your second one, was she really yours to begin with? Yeah. Ask the question. Oh, yeah. When you got your second one, was it really yours in the eyes of God? That's right. All right. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Uh -huh. How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Yes. For the woman which hath an husband. The woman. Now, this, this, this scripture always make people tip out early. <laughs> <laughs> the woman that have a husband is bound by the law to her husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth all right but if the husband be dead if the husband be in prison if the husband be dead weak dead blind dead drunk dead suck cigarettes dead short dead lose his teeth dead lose one eye dead deaf dead deaf dead deaf dead does the husband be dying? Dead. Ah, uh, you got to be dead. Dead. All right. But if the husband be dead, uh -huh. she is loosed from the law of her husband. Yes. So then if. if here, here, here now. So then if. Here's the puncher right here. If. While her husband lives. While her husband is alive. 
she be, and she's married to, to another, another man, man, she shall be called an adulteress. No, she shall be called a Christian. She shall be called an adulteress. No, a Christian. An adulteress. What about she's on the choir? She shall be called an adulteress. A usher. An adulteress. Organ player. An adulteress. Organ uh, choir director. An adulteress. Amen. If you got your second wife while your first wife was living, that's not your wife. That's right. That's right. So when your first wife die, your second marriage is not recognizable in the eyes of God. That's right. For it to be recognizable in the eyes of God, you can't get married again until the first one died. Yeah. So if the first one was alive, when you got the second one, you got to repent for that adultery, and then when the first one died, you got to marry the second one so God can recognize it. That's right. And you're not supposed to marry her while the first one living. living. That's right. Hallelujah. Next question. Come on, brothers. I'd like to ask about uh, the day and time that we're living in with all this artificial intelligence and virtual reality and all this. Mm -hmm. We get bombarded with all these phone calls about you owe people that you really don't owe anything. Mm -hmm. And the person you owe ain't asking and you can't get them to agree on nothing. How are we gonna handle that when they take it and sell your name and your information? Then they wanna take you to court. When you wanna make a complaint, you can't even get the police or anything. And I've been here 66, almost 67 years. Uh -huh. I used to pay all them, uh, fees for when they broke in my house and vandalized my cars. I ain't run out here and chase nobody down and give their name all over town and all over the world. And nobody brought my stuff back, but they want to bring me and accuse me of things and then you can't even get the real person that you owe. So well, how can we do that, especially if they've already died too? And they already died? No, some people are already gone, but they, you had a debt. Yeah, you can't pay them. Okay. I just want to know how do we handle that. <laughs> yeah, if you manage to pay them, I want to know how you hook that up. The word of God says. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, we're at verse 29. All right. Lord, this only have I found. Now, look, I need, we, we're going to need, if we got any more extra mics, we're going to need, we don't have no more extra mics. So your brothers, please look at on both sides, front, back, everywhere. And I need you to let me know when you give a microphone to somebody so I can know uh, where I'm looking at. All right, give a chapter and verse again, please. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 29. Everybody all right? All right, come on. Lo, lo, this only have I found. This only have I found. That God hath made man upright. Yes. But they have sought out many inventions. They have sought out many inventions. Many inventions. All right, yes, they got many inventions out here, social media and all this other stuff. But the Bible says, oh, no man. And when the Bible says, oh, no man, all you can do is make an effort to pay back who you owe. Oh, no man, anything. The Bible says. In the book of Romans, chapter 13, and that verse 8. Do what? Oh, no man, anything. Oh, no man, anything. But to love one another. But to love one another. So if you know someone and you owe them something, then just pay it back. Otherwise than that, I can. The Bible says it shall proceed no further. You're going to have all these inventions because the Bible prophesied. That's right. All these inventions are going to come about. They have sought out many inventions. The Bible says they have sought out many inventions. Many and there's inventions. many evil inventions also. Yeah. All right, next question. Uh, I know we got to be obedient about the hair covering, but I'm kind of confused about the hair covering. All right, 11 chapter, 1 Corinthians, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll start at verse 1. All right. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Yes. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things. Yes. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. All right. But I would have you know that the head of every man the is Christ. The Bible said the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman the is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Yes. Every man praying or prophesying every having his, his head covered. praying or prophesying having, having his head covered. His head covered. Dishonoreth his head. You see the Muslims and many of the Jews praying with their head covered. They be at the wall. When you pray with your head covered, brother, how do God take it? Dishonor with his head. You dishonor God. That's right. Dishonor. All right. But every woman. Uh oh. But every woman. Every woman. That prays or prophesies with her head. You pray or prophesy or was dealing with worship, mm -hmm. and you got your head uncovered. Uncovered. 
dishonoreth her head. And remember the Bible said the head of every woman is the man. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get this, this, the verse where preachers have made a mess mm -hmm. about covering. Come on, son. Bible said your hair is your covering. covering. Let's read that. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 at verse 15. All right. But if a woman have long hair. Now, I want to show you this real good because dumb preachers, ignorant, deceive of their close relative, the devil. Yeah. Have told a woman, you ain't got to have nothing on your head because of this scripture. Yeah. Listen. But if a woman have long hair. If a woman have long hair. It is a glory to her. Why? For her hair is given her for a covering. A covering, but it didn't say a cover. No. Covering. Covering. And covered is two different things. That's right. If me and some brothers is working in here and we lay in carpet. And you say, hey, Pastor Jenny, what y'all doing? I'm covering the floor. That's right. That means it's incomplete. And I say, sis, come on back in 30 minutes. And you come back and say, oh, the floor is covered, complete. That's right. When you got a daughter, it's cold outside, wintertime. Mama want to go out there and play. Girl, cover your head. It's cold out there. You ain't tell her put hair on. No. Her hair is her covering. covering. But you told her put something on her covering because she's bareheaded, yet she has hair. That's right. Her hair is a covering, but her covering is uncovered, so the woman must cover her covering. That's right. The dumb preachers. Preacher tell her, women, well, you ain't got to cover your head. That's a dumb preacher. Mm. The Bible speaks plain. For if her, she pray or prophesy with her head, with uncovered. Her head uncovered, dishonor with her head. You think Paul was going around telling women put hair on? Mm. No, Walgreens and CVS is doing that for you. That's right. Your hair is a covering. covering. But when you wish up God, you cover the covering. That's right. Because when you cover, that shows honor That's right. to men on earth, and it shows respect to the angels in heaven. For this cause, Give chapter and verse. First Corinthians chapter eleven and at verse ten. For this reason, ought the woman to have power on her head. For what reason? Because of the angels, brother. When that woman got her head covered, it shows respect to the angels right. because the angels bear the shape of man. That's right. And that's why the Bible said the head of every woman is the man. So yes, your hair is a covering, but covering means incomplete. So when we finish covering this floor, then the floor will be covered. Right. You are born with a covering, but your covering is bare. Right. That's why you must cover the covering. That's right. For if the woman be not covered, if the, the Bible speak plain, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 6, if the woman do not be covered, be covered, let her also be shorn. Let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame, if it be a shame, for a woman to be shorn or shaven, then what? Let her be covered. Covered and covering. Those two words the preachers overlook. That's right. So you got to have your head covered. That shows honor and respect towards man and honor and respect towards God. Next question. My question is about the facial hair because I used to go to a church where he told us if we didn't have a shave, I mean a fresh clean shave, we were going to go to hell. And I was trying to see if there were any clarifications on the facial hair. <laughs> You was taught that if you don't have a clean shave, you're going to hell? It's not even a half a scripture that teach that. No. <laughs> not, 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 never mind the whole scripture. It's not even a half a scripture. This is the problem with churches. Bishop has implemented his own idea. And then he has taught for doctrine the commandments of men. That's right. When you teach for doctrine, now there's nothing wrong with having church rules. But those rules cannot contradict scripture. If the preacher make a rule, we're going to ask all the brothers to be clean shaved. All right. But don't try to make it doctrine and say, if you're not clean shaved, you're going to hell. That's 
That's right. You see, doctrine is when I tell men, all right, no long hair. No long hair. That's doctrine. Yeah. Do it not even nature itself The Bible says in 11 chapter 1 Corinthians. And at verse 14. Do not nature itself teach you. That if a man, man has long hair, long hair, it is a shame unto him. It's a shame unto him. Unto him. That's why our brothers cut their hair. We ain't walking around with long hair. We're not walking around with long hair, throwing our hair back like sisters. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So when I, when, I, when I teach about a brother not having long hair, long. I got to go to the Bible when I make doctrine. doctrine. But if I come along and tell my brothers, all right, even if you got a beard, let's keep yourself clean and neat and you don't have your beard straggly, looking like you laying out there in the street for about 20 years, then I'm implementing rules. And as I have to make it plain and let the brothers know, all right, I, I don't have Bible for such and such and such of this, but this is a rule that I'm implementing. But if I say you're going to hell for it, no, you're only going to hell for what God said you're going to hell for. In the book of Saint Not for the way some happy bishop feel. That's right. All right. In the book of St. Mark chapter 7 and at verse 7. All right. How be it in vain do they worship me? Yes. Teaching for doctrine. You see, when they tell you you're going to hell for something, they're saying that you're going to hell for something that violates doctrine. Doctrine won't change. Because doctrine is written. That's right. The Bible said they teach for doctrine. The commandments of men. The commandments of men. So no, the Bible don't say you'll go to hell uh, if you're uh, not clean shaven. Many of the old prophets, I believe Aaron, the Bible talk about Aaron had a beard so long. So the Bible don't say that you'll go to hell if you're not clean shaven on your face. All right. Uh, we were in the same church, which was apostolic, and it was... Uh, they beat you up with that scripture, obedience is better than sacrifice. So if you don't obey the, you know, the doctrine, that you'll go to hell. Same thing is when um, my question was uh, to clarify that when I received the Holy Ghost and um, God had told me to leave the church and I went to the pastor to let him know that I was leaving the church, it was, um, well, I'm going to hell because I'm not going to get truth anywhere else. And, um, you know, and I know there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ, and I knew that for me, but it's just, you know, everybody's scared to leave the church because of you're going to go to hell if you don't stay here and under this teaching. It's scare tactics. Now, you'll go to hell if you don't be under the teaching of God's word that he gave his apostles. Acts 2.42. The Bible said it continues to fasten in the apostles' doctrine without question, me and anybody else. If we don't continue in the doctrine of the apostles, which is the teaching of Jesus, you will go to hell. Preachers try to make it their church. Go ahead, Pastor. So they say, if you leave my church, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's why I tell the people, don't ever say, I'm going to Pastor Jenna's church. No, you ain't. No. But you put that lie on me. That's right. Jesus said. Matthew chapter 16 and at verse 18. Matthew 16 and 18 says. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock. And upon this rock. I will build my church. That's why the church cannot be named after the pastor. Right. Oh, you don't like that, do you? <laughs> the church. Can't, a lot of folk go to church. Bishop Reagan's temple. Bishop John's Memorial Temple, Evergreen Baptist Church, Church of the Open Doors, Church of the Go-Karts. They got all kind of names. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my, my church. My the church. church must be named after the one that built it. That's right. That's why it's the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling the world who built this church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. I will do what? I will build my church. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, it ain't Pastor Jenna's church, and I'm not the founder. That's right. I, I, I didn't start the church. I can't put you in it. Holy Ghost put you in the church. The right. Bible said you're baptized by one spirit into one body. There is no body in the Bible that professed to be apostolic. Mm -mm. Jesus had never thought enough of the prophets or the apostles to name his belief after them, after them. That's right. Never. 
You that walk around apostolic, Baptist, and all this stuff, ain't none of that stuff in the Bible. The Lord ain't told you to be that. The Lord told you be holy. I had a bishop write me, and he's supposed to be apostolic, and he wanted to debate me on this. I told him I advise you to think first before you step in the square circle. You think first. He said, you don't have no, you talk to me. He said, I believe you got to be holy. He said, but there's nowhere in the Bible where the one faith was called holy. Give me the book of Jude. In the book of Jude, chapter 1 and that verse Listen, 20. Jude is right next to Revelation. Only got one chapter. Shouldn't be hard to find it. That's right. The faith. There is no such thing. Hear me, Houston. No such thing. And you television viewers, hard head, stubborn, Texas longhorns. Eh? There is no such thing as a faith called apostolic, as a faith called Baptist, as a faith called Pentecostal, as a faith called non-denominational. There is no such thing we've been lied to for years. For years. It's scary when you think of it. All this money we done gave, been loyal, helped build churches. I want to open your eyes so you can make your exodus out of these churches. Let's see the name of the faith. Wait a minute before you read that. First, let's see how many faiths it is in the figures four or five. One Lord. How many Lords? One Lord. How many Lords? One Lord. No, three. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. One Lord. Come on. What, 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 what's the problem, Ron? Is it where I'm at? Too many microphones? Just static? All right. All right. We're, we're trying to fight our way through it anyway. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. Now, this is to defend anybody. You come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We'll pick up where we left off. One Lord. One faith. How many faiths? One faith. What did the word faith mean, Houston? It mean what? It mean what? It mean belief. So one Lord. One and faith. how many beliefs? One faith. How many baptisms? One baptism. Now give me the book of Jude. Let's see the name that the Bible addressed this faith. Now Jude chapter 1 and that verse 20. Yes. But ye beloved. Ye, that's talking to the church. But ye beloved. Ye beloved. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. On your most. On your most apostolic faith. Your most holy faith. Go ahead, Pastor. Wait, 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 wait. You, you got glasses. Read that right. But ye beloved. Building up yourselves on your most. Baptist faith. Holy faith. Jehovah Witness faith. Holy faith. Pentecostal faith. Holy faith. Lutheran faith. Holy faith. Christian scientist faith. Holy faith. Non-denominational faith. Holy faith. Somebody is wrong and it ain't the Bible. That's right. Somebody is wrong and it's not the Bible. One faith. And I challenge any preacher in the whole state of Texas to show me your faith, the name of it, in this Bible other than holy. Holy faith. I read that God, we got the best thing on the market. That's right. Eh? That's right. We got the, hallelujah, glory to God. We got the best thing on the market. That's right. It's a good feeling to be able to go to the Bible and find your faith in the Bible besides just shooting off at the mouth, professing something that ain't never been in the Bible. Amen. Go ahead. We've been lied to for years. Yeah. But one thing I thank God for his mercy, when you sincere, God will not let you die without hearing the right thing first. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So the preacher just used scare tactics, sisters. So don't pay him no mind. Pay him no you mind. go on and leave out of that mess that you're in and walk with the only thing that's in that Bible. That's it. God say, be holy. The holiness. Somebody asked me when the holiness started. It never had a beginning. Never had a beginning. All these others, don't you hear the so-called apostolic people say the church started 33 A.D. Where is that at in the Bible? Yeah. Have you heard them say it? Amen. Where is that at in the Bible? Yeah. Have you heard, haven't y'all been taught in some of these churches there's five minor prophets and five majors? Have y'all heard that? Yeah. Did you know that never been in the Bible? Have you heard that Peter was crucified head down and feet up? Have you ever heard that? Did you not know no such death is in the Bible? 
Have you heard that Paul died at Nero's chopping block? Have you heard that? Paul's death have never been recorded in the Bible. Years and years and years of lies. And they say Pastor Jenny's trying to start something new. I ain't trying to start nothing new. No. So we're there, God, I'm sticking to that old time preaching. In Ephesians chapter 1 and that verse 4. The kind of preaching that Ma and Paul used to tell you about. That's right. The kind of preaching that give you fear that you don't have. Yeah. And the churches now don't fear God now. No. This preaching brings the fear of God back. And if you get the fear of God back in the community, then that community will respect themselves and respect God. You have a house where father and mother and children are there. When those sons and daughters start losing respect for mother and father, they don't reverence them, don't honor them, don't have that fear towards the authority that the father has. The whole house is going to have chaos. That's right. Because the daughters will not pay attention when mother try to correct them. And the son going to jump in father's face. Man, when I came up, we couldn't even dream of talking back to our parents. If we dreamed it, somehow we got a beating in the dream. We didn't give our mother and father back talk. No. When my mother talked to my sisters, my sisters shut their mouth and listened. Today, you talk to your daughters, they start walking. And the mothers be, don't be walking while I'm talking to you. And they don't stop. And then this sick law of America, you can't chastise your children. Oh, no. The Bible says, beat the child. Beat the child. You won't kill it. That's right. My job as a minister is to enforce God's law and help you enforce God's law in your house. And when you try to raise your children, my job is to back you with God's word to teach you how to raise your children. These old blind, devil-deceived, limousine, riding, pimp preachers ain't teaching nothing. All you do is go to church and hear the same thing. Look at the neighbor next to you. 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 And hold the neighbor hand and say, neighbor, this is the time. This is the time. Look at the neighbor to your left. Look at the neighbor to your left. Look at the neighbor to your left. And say, neighbor, 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 this is your time. This is your time. It's your time to be made a fool. <laughs> our preaching is plain. Nothing fancy about our preaching. You ain't got to scratch your head because it's too deep to understand. Pastor Paul said, having this hope, we speak with great plainness of speech. God's men are plain Bible speakers, plain Bible God interpreters. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. What did he say there? In Ephesians chapter 1 and that verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him. Let's see how long this holy stuff been around. According to as God have chosen us in him when? Before the foundation of the world. Can't nobody religion go back that far before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. God purposed for us to be holy how long? Before the foundation of the world. Before he made heaven and earth and the mountains and the sea and the fishes and the water and man on earth. He purposed for us to be holy. We should be holy. And he haven't changed it yet. No. And he's not going to change. Going to change. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. We, 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 God, have, God have moved on us to bring this old holy preaching back. Yeah. Because the devil's laboring to get as many billions into hell with him. That's right. And everybody is professing everything. But what the Bible said. That's right. What if God said we profess a good profession? And there is no good profession before many witnesses mm -hmm. unless it's holy. That's right. All right, next question. I'm going to take a few more questions. Come on. Yes, sir. Morning clarity on what the uh, Israelites are teaching. What does the Bible mean when it says in Romans 9, 13? And as it is written, Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? Does God hate men? <laughs> All right, Romans 9, 13. Romans chapter 9 and at verse 13. 
As it is written. As it is written. Jacob have I loved. Jacob I love. But Esau have I hated. Why did he love Jacob? Because Jacob was a righteous man. He lived a righteous life. Why did he love Esau or hate Esau? Esau was totally the opposite. Now, the Hebrew Israelite brothers, this is what they try to do. The way they try to make it is Jacob represent black folk and Esau represent white folk and God going to destroy all white brothers and sisters in the earth and the only one that's going to be in the kingdom of God is black folk. Black folk. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Yeah. In Isaiah chapter 56. And mm -hmm. the, remember, the Ku Klux Klan say they're Christians too. And they reversed it. They say only white folk is going to be in the kingdom of God and all black folk hmm. is going to be in hell with, with the devil or they're going to be serving, uh, waiting on them in heaven as butlers and maids and cleaning their white robes. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's why I love holiness. Holiness come between white and black and bring you both down to your knees. That's right. Let me say this to every white man living, every black man living. If I cut you, your blood, both of you, going to be red. That's right. And when a black man die and the white man die, I never met a racist worm. Am I right? Amen. And it's made of one blood. Do you hear this in the book of Acts of the Apostles? Now in Acts chapter 17 and at verse 26. What? And it's made of one blood, all nations, all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Now, there is no racist worm. So therefore, hmm. it won't be no worms who's going to consume your wicked body. And then when the worm consumed the white brother, it's going to look at the black brother and say, no, no, no. We ain't going to touch him, you know. That's, that's, that's a brother. <laughs> the worms ain't down there. That's a brother. No. Right on to the worms. <laughs> he ain't doing that. No. Nor will there be a group of worms that's going to consume the black man and look at the white man and say, oh, no, we, we, can't, we can't eat him. He's white. He's pure. <laughs> He's pure. He's white. He's angelic. Every white man, every black man that don't obey God, you and your white britches and you and your black britches, the hell you going? That's right. And you're going to burn. And I'm telling you right now, one thing about the devil, he's willing to accept you, black, white, brown, yellow, even if you're plaid, right. the devil will accept you. That's right. So this is where religion, religion, being used as a tool of Satan to try to put white folk above black and try to put black folk above white. Now let me get wrong. Because a lot of folk cringe when they hear us. And some folks say, I can't believe this man say this stuff. <clears throat> to my white brothers, no white man is a measuring stick of living right. It ain't the white race is not a measuring stick for nobody. Nobody. The black man, you're not a measuring stick for nobody. That's right. God is the measuring stick for everybody. Right. Are you listening? My old white brothers, you might as well you might as well get rid of your old faded clan sheets that done turn brown. Yeah. Get some bleach and whiten them up. That's right. I take that clan sheet and wrap a rope around your waist and baptize you in water. That's in right. the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. Amen. You get what I'm telling you? And it shall come to pass in the, the last days. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the second chapter, it shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of that the, the, the Lord's house, house, house shall be established in the top of the mountain. And the top of the mountain it shall be exalted above the hill of who's coming. All nations. No, all black folk. All nations. No, 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 no. 
All white folk. And all nations. Just all black folk. All nations. No black or white, just yellow. And all nations. Who's coming? All nations. Who's coming to the Lord's house? All nations. Who's coming to the Lord's house? All nations. All nations shall do what? Shall flow unto it. Then what? And many people shall. No, just black people. Many people. Just black folk. And many people. Just white folk. And many people. Many people shall come and say, Come ye. Come on. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let's come up to the mouth of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. Wait a minute. Who's coming to the house of the God of Jacob? And many people shall go and say, Black, come white, ye. brown, yellow, red is welcome to come to Jacob's God's house. And he will teach us and, of his way. And we go, oh yeah, go to God. Oh. We're going to teach you God's way. And we will walk and in his And we're going to walk in God. You're going to find the black, the white, the brown, and the yellow going down in water in the name of Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. Repenting of their sins, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're going to find that white sister getting rid of her pants. The black sister getting rid of her pants. The white sister covering her head. The black sister covering his head. The black homosexual straighten up and letting the world know I'm a man. That's right. All nations. All nations. Shall flow unto it. All nations. I don't care if you're black as pepper, white as salt. Yellow is butter and clear as water. That's right. When the Lord come, you better be, you better have obeyed God or die. Hell, that black and white, brown, yellow, orange, psychedelic man is going. Isaiah chapter 56 and that verse. All right, real quick so I can get the next question. For mine house shall be called in house of prayer for, for all black folk. For all people. Yeah, read it right. What's the matter with you? For mine house shall be called in house of prayer for all people. For all what? All people. No, all white folk. All people. Now. You white churches, you white churches who don't want no black folk in there, mm. and you black churches mm -hmm. who don't want no white folk in there. Did you hear what the Lord says? For you better give chapter and verse again. Isaiah chapter 56 and that verse 7. You know, they call Pastor Jennings militant. They say he don't preach with no love. He got a lot of hate in his <laughs> bosom. The thing I hate is the devil. That's right. That's what I hate. That's right. The Holy Ghost said. Even this. What? Even them. Even them. Will I bring in my holy mountain. Will I bring them. Them. Take mountain. God to my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house I'm of going, prayer. God said I'm going to make them joyful. My house of prayer. Take God in my house. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted and? upon mine altar. And what? From mine house. The, who house? Mine house. Not Bishop Cunningham house. Mine house. Hallelujah. You see, in your bishop church, white brothers can't come in there. Yeah. Or if white brothers do come in there, some black folk feel important. Mm -hmm. White folk come in there, they say, wow, the Lord really working in mysterious ways. We, <laughs> we, have, we have some white Christians visit. We have some white Christians visit us today. That let us know we're not alone in this fight in Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You see, I love to tell it like it is. Then when black brothers go to a white church, white folk be looking at them. <laughs> grab their children. Get over here, Johnny. <laughs> Am I right, I said? I come along with the word of God with God's help and knock the black and the white and little Johnny over with the Bible. That's right. This racist poison. That's why, that's why the, the, the demons love Trump so. Trump have resurrected and helped push that demon of racism and prejudice out in bigots. All white folk is not bigots. No, no all white folk is not bigots. No. There are some white brothers and sisters that are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, and love God That's and right. love everybody else. That's right. So I don't put no race above the other. No. Uh -uh. When he said, Jacob, I love you, Esau, but I he, hate, he, he's dealing with the deeds, that's not it. your color. That's it. All right, a few more questions so I can knock off. How you doing, Pastor? Yes, sir. Um, if a believer has been baptized in the Holy Spirit, yes. but is not doing the call of the Great Commission by preaching, proclaiming the gospel, yes. can they lose the Holy Spirit? Can you lose the Holy Ghost? Yes. Oh, yes, you can lose the Holy Ghost. This one save, always save came out of hell. That's right. 
Ain't no such thing as one seed. It's not even a, listen, it's not a scripture the size of a gnat's back leg <laughs> that ever taught one save, always save. That lie was taught before I was born. Look at the subtle logic in this teaching. If once saved, always saved, that's telling me once I get saved, I can live like a dog. And it doesn't matter because I'm still saved when Jesus comes. Right. So once I get saved, hey, on Tuesday, I can go out, I can go out Tuesday night. Here we go, here we go, come. Why? Once saved, always saved. Let me teach you. The Lord only stay with you on terms. Second Chronicles chapter 15. My God, let's lock it down in Second Chronicles chapter, chapter 15, 15. And we'll start at verse 1. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Second Chronicles chapter 15. The 15th chapter. And at verse 1. And again at verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Odin. That's what's missing in the, that's what's missing in the pulpit. Yeah. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. These men is preaching opinions and ideas and philosophy and theology. That's why they teaching all this rubbish and these lies and trash gotten people running around in church like you in the Indiana 500. Sit down and get some teaching in you. That's right. Done ran so much, done ran what little knowledge you have out. That's right. Listen at this. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded. All right. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Yes. Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. Hear ye me, Asa, and all, all of Judah. Judah and Benjamin. All right, let's look at the terms. The Lord is with you. On what terms? While ye be with him. What else? And if ye seek him. If you seek him. He will be found of you. What? But if oh, ye... Wait, 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 wait. What? But. But. If ye forsake him. When you forsake something, you leave it. Leave it. If you forsake him. He will forsake you. That contradict one save, always save. That's right. You leave the Lord, the Lord going to leave you. That's right. In other words, if you repent of your sins and you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, you got to be taught how to live holy. Yeah. Living holy is a process. Yeah. That's right. You must be taught how to live holy. That's right. Now, when you talk about declaring the gospel, a man has to be taught before he declare anything. Yeah. God don't send anything. No. There's biblical protocol who God sends. That's right. You better give me the book of Luke eleven forty nine. Mm. Move quick, son. Luke chapter 11 and at verse 49. Let's see who God sends direct. Directly. And then we'll break down who God sends indirect. Luke chapter 11 and at verse 49. Follow me and get me. Therefore also said the wisdom of God. No, the wisdom of Pastor Jennings. The wisdom of God. Pastor Jennings. The wisdom of God. This is God talking. Therefore also said the wisdom of God. What? I will send them prophets. I will send them prophets. And apostles. And apostles. And some of them they shall slay and persecute. Apostles and prophets are sent direct of God. Direct of God. Bishops, elders, evangelists, they must be taught and sent by the apostle. In the book of Titus chapter 1. And we start at verse 1. A man said, well, I'm an evangelist. God called and sent me direct. Oh, no, he did not. Oh, no. No, no, no. Hey, hey brother evangelist, you're going to come back to the Bible. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter 4 and at verse 5. Second Timothy 4 and 5 says. But watch thou in all things. You know, history says Timothy was the first bishop of the church. Mm. And these preachers preach that. You liar. That's a lie. The Bible ain't never said Timothy was a bishop. No. Listen at this. Second Timothy chapter 4 and at verse 5. Hey, I want this to be good in case I got any undercover evangelist in here mm -hmm. who said God called and sent me direct to be an evangelist. You mean well, but no, he did not. No. Your calling and your act of ministry must be compliant with the Bible. That's right. Must be compliant with the, I lay in the Bible <laughs> like a bird in the nest. That's right. I lay in it. I curdle up all in the scriptures. Okay. Just lay it right. out. <laughs> not coming out. Not coming out of it. Yeah. That's right. Glory take God. What did he say? Second Timothy chapter 4 and at verse 5. All right. But watch thou in all things. Watch in everything. Endure affliction. Endure affliction. Do the work. Do the work. Of an evangelist. Of an evangelist. Make full proof. Make full proof. Of thy ministry. Of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be off. The, apostle, the Bible said how Paul laid hands. That's right. On Timothy. On Timothy. And stared up the gift that was in him. That's right. But the Lord didn't tell Timothy to do the work. No. Paul told him. That's right. 
And Paul was an apostle. That's right. You don't read where Timothy went out, or oh, the Lord told me to do the work. No, he didn't. The apostle was the first office in the church. Mm -hmm. The Bible said if God had set first in the church Apostles. apostle, and the apostle Paul laid hands on Timothy that stirred up the gift that was in him and then told him, do the work of an evangelist. This charge I commit unto thee. Listen at this in the book of Timothy. He had a charge Charles. given him from the Apostle Paul. That's right. The Apostle Paul. That's why you got to have a preacher. Right. These folks running around, preachers running around with no overseer, no leadership, no preacher. The Bible said like sheep without a shepherd. No shepherd. That's why the churches are all dysfunctional, disorganized. Everything is going on. Ministers up preaching stuff that's wrong and no leader to correct them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like these other preachers. Uh -uh. I have hundreds of preachers. Not, I, I won't tolerate a half a lie. That's Not right. even a whole one. I ain't going to tolerate a half a one. That's right. If a minister get up and teach something that's wrong, then he got to come back before the church yeah. and correct the wrong that he does. Right. No philosophy, no theology. Right. No. People ask me, well, Pastor Jennings, do y'all have a Bible college? Here it is right here. The Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ah, Amen. That's our Bible college. That's it. The church. Glory right, to God. Don't you know the Bible speak against the using of philosophy? That's right. We're not allowed to use philosophy. Mm -hmm. No, you better give Book me Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter and 2. And verse quickly. 8. And verse 8. Beware. You know, when you got a sign that says, beware of dog, would you be dumb enough to go peep in the fence to see is it for real? Amen. Or would you believe the sign? The Bible said, beware. Beware lest any man spoil you. Through what? Through philosophy. What else? And vain deceit. How? How? What is it made out of? After the tradition of men. And? After the rudiments of the world. What else? And not after Christ. My beloved brother, philosophy have contaminated these churches. And philosophy got us saying amen, amen, amen to stuff that never been in the Bible. Yeah. And you, don't, you ain't allowed to ask your bishop no questions. He tell you, don't question God. The way you deal with that is tell him you ain't God. Okay. I'm questioning you. You ain't God. Philosophy. Philosophy. Five minor prophets and five major. The Bible ain't never called the prophets. Major or minor. That's philosophy. That's right. That's right. 400 years of darkness fell upon the earth <coughs> when Malachi died. Liar! That's the Bible lie. ain't never said how many years of darkness. Mm -hmm. The Bible just said darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Mm -hmm. That's all it says. And at evening time it shall be light. That's it ain't right. never said that it was 400 years of darkness. Mm -hmm. Philosophy. Philosophy. Mm -hmm. Preacher said, when the Lord come, Gabriel gonna blow the trumpet. You old liar. The Bible ain't never said the angel gonna hit a note. Right. Bible ain't never said that lie. No. Never. Never. Isn't it shocking when you find out this stuff? Haven't you heard there were seven deacons in the church? Mm. The Bible ain't never said it was seven deacons. No. Give me the book of Acts of the Apostles. In quickly. the book of Acts, chapter seven, and we're starting at verse. Follow me in your Bible. Mm. A lot of folks ask me, how do Williams know what to get? Do y'all practice? No, man, I ain't got time to practice with him. <laughs> No time for that, Pastor. I ain't got time for that. Well, how you know, Pastor Jenner? Let me give you a brief testimony quickly. That way you don't know, you don't think he got a spell on him. <laughs> when I was coming up in falsehood, that's when God started dealing with me about the way of holiness. Uh, him and I grew up together. He was a Trinitarian, so you know he was blind in every way. <laughs> Amen. This, he was a Trinitarian. He believed, <laughs> he believed in women preachers. He followed Reverend Ike. Amen. You know, and some of you young heads don't know who Reverend Ike was, but uh, some of us, we know he, he followed Reverend Ike. Shambach. He had a little artificial prayer cloth from Reverend Ike. He followed Shambach. A. A. He Allen. followed A.A. Island. He followed Ernest Angeli. He was messed up from the floor up. <laughs> and he denounced the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He denounced that it was one God. He denounced 
Jesus Christ was God. He, the devil truly was his father. <laughs> so we grew up together. He lived down the street. I live up the street. So him and I would see each other. And every day we were having out with the Bible as kids. That's right. And uh, he would get so mad, he would throw his finger in my face. He would say, Nikki, I don't care what you say. I said, Williams. We, 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 we would call him Soup. We used to call him Soup because when we played football, you know, he was, all, he was skinny than what he is now. But he would play with, we would play with guys the size of Rick. Right. And when they would go to tackle Williams, he was so skinny you couldn't hold him. <laughs> <laughs> so we called him Soup. And I said, Soup, the Bible says, he said, it doesn't matter. That's right. Until one day, I locked his jaws up with that Bible. I said, who's coming back for you at the end? He said, the Lord is coming back for me. I said, is the Lord Christ? He said, yes, yeah, the Lord Christ. I got the scripture in the book of Acts 9, 5. Who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I'm Jesus. That knocked whims over so deep, he went down in water. In the <laughs> name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, what happened? Years later, years later, I began to work with him. And we was in our teens. I showed him how to go from Old Testament to New, dealing with subjects. Then when God moved on me years later to start this great work that he showed me in a vision many years ago. One day, folks came up for prayer, and I was praying for them, and Williams came up for prayer. And the Lord moved on me to lay hands on them. And I'll never forget what I asked God, because God gave me a very quick mind when it comes to the Bible. And I knew for someone to really read, they had to keep up with me. And I laid hands on them and asked God, give him the same mind mm. that you gave me. Amen. That whatever you move me to preach, Hallelujah. you move him to read even if he never knew it exists in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God Almighty. Answer my prayer. Oh, yes. That's why you can hear folks on YouTube. How do he know what to get? How do he know what to get? Oh, Lord, take God, that same spirit that God put in me to preach the word, mm. that same spirit God put in him to go find the word. Oh, See, he, God bless him to find it, and God bless me to interpret it after he find it. That's right. So you got, you, reading the Bible is good, but understanding it is better. That's right. You can read all... Don't you read? Yeah. And sometimes you end up more confused the more you read. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? Yeah. And how can he preach except he be sent? You can read all you want, but you got to have a preacher to break down the scriptures and make it plain. That's right. Huh? Hallelujah. In the days of Daniel, writing came on the wall. Many, many to kill you for sin. They call the soothsayers, they call the astrologers, they call the Chaldeans, they call all of them. Notice none of them can read the writing. Let Daniel be called. Glory to God. Here comes Daniel, who had the spirit of the Holy God in him, light and understanding. And Daniel broke it down and let the king know what's going to happen. You got to have a preacher who's able, by God's permission. I've never been to Bible college since I've been born. Never took a Bible course since I've been black. And you know what? I've been black for 55 years and I ain't changing colors. <laughs> That's right. Holy Ghost made me a preacher. Making me a preacher, he gave me a divine ability to go into that word Amen. and break it down so that even a child can understand it. That's right. Amen. And I, and I can't credit myself. I have to credit God. That's right. Amen. I have to credit God. And all these people that's coming from all around the world, understanding the Bible. You know how many thousands of letters that I get more over every day? Pastor Jennings, for the first time, I'm understanding the Bible. I'm understanding the Bible. When I watch your program on social media, on YouTube, people are getting their Bible and they are following me. And they are understanding it more and more and more. And the more you understand the Bible, the better you can serve God. And the more you understand the Bible, the more fight you get from the devil. That's right. All right, I take two, about two more questions. Let me get my, let me get my brother up here. Two more questions real quick. Uh, yeah, um, 
uh, I'm still struggling with the, the coming out of that whole Trinity thing. And, uh, yes, sir. Uh, th- parts in the Bible where uh, like Jesus was uh, praying in the garden, you know, praying to God. And, yes. Uh, I'm wondering how that, how, how does that stand right now? Like... That Wonderful question. I'm not, I'm not even sure how to word it. Cause, no, no, yeah. Look, I got you. I understand. You know why? What's your name, brother? Uh, Christopher. Chris? Christopher, yeah. Christopher? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can remember that. My brother's name is Chris. I can, I can help you with the so-called Trinity because he used to be one. <laughs> That's why I got to pound on him with the word in case them three gods come back up. <laughs> now, first of all, Chris, the word Trinity have never been in the Bible. They say Trinity is three distinct personalities. If you get a, any one person with multi-personalities, what do you call them? Imagine a schizophrenic God. God is a spirit. St. John chapter 4 and verse 24. Fulfilling heaven and earth and even above that. He's divine, he's eternal. In order for us to be redeemed, because Adam fell by disobedience, bit of the fruit, sin came into the world, and everybody that was born in the world was conceived in lust and in sin. So a remedy or a cure had to come into play to take away our sins. Death was needed. A sacrifice. God couldn't die because God is spirit and a spirit don't have blood and you can't kill God. The nature of God is divine. So in order for us to be redeemed, God sent prophets out to prophesy about his coming. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter, your God will come. I want to read that quickly. Amen. Come on, son. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 35. Chapter 35 mm-hmm. And then the Bible says, let us know what our God will do when he comes. Isaiah 35, we'll start at verse 1. No, let's go right to the point. Your God will come. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll start at verse 3. You got to move quick. Strengthen ye the weak hands Strengthen and confirm the, the weak feeble knees. hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart. Be strong, fear not. Why? Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Now, pay, I want you to pay close attention, Chris, and to everybody else. And you will understand Jesus Christ being God Almighty. Your God will come with vengeance. Will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. And what? He will come and save you. Hold it. Who will come and save you? He will come and save you. But didn't Jesus save us? That's right. But how many saviors do we got? Oh, all right. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. Yes. He will come and save you. And when he come, what are he going to do? Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Jesus did that. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Jesus did that. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart. Jesus did that. And the tongue of the dumb sing. Now hold it. Here's God being eternal. He bears the title Father, Creator. In order for a sacrifice to be given, God had to come. How did he come? He made a body, a physical body of flesh and blood in the body of Mary who was of the tribe of Judah, of the house of David. And the flesh that Mary birthed was called Son of God. The Son was a body. God that made the world was in that body. That's right. To wit. Listen at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and at verse 19. That's what? To wit. To wit. That God. That God. Was in Christ. Was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. So he couldn't reconcile us the way he was being spirit because the spirit had no blood. So he formed a body and the body was called son and God was in that son. God was in that body. The reason why he made a physical body because the physical body represent the church. 
the body of Christ. And just like the spirit was in that body, the spirit is in the church. And just like the physical body left an example for the world how to live holy, now the church got to live an example for the world how to live holy. Live holy. Now, Jesus, that natural man, when he would pray to the Father, it wasn't two gods. It was two natures. What do you mean? Your flesh is a mortal nature. The spirit that is in your flesh is a divine nature. It's not two of you. It's just two natures. There's a human and the divine but it's still one Chris. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? So Jesus, when he walked earth, the body was human, but the inner man was divine. And the same inner man that was divine was the same Lord that created the universe. So the purpose of him making that body was to leave an example for the world. What to do, what not to do. Holy Ghost is the same thing as Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. It's just another title for God. The Bible said God is a spirit. The question is, what kind of spirit is he? He is the Holy Spirit. So Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, God, that's all the same. But the name of God, the name of of the Holy Spirit, the name of Alpha and Omega, the name of the Lord of heaven and earth is Jesus. Jesus. That's his name. Now, do you get me? So, the only difference was in nature. The man was human, the Spirit of God was divine. And whenever you would see Jesus pray, that was God leaving an example in the flesh to teach us how to pray. What's that? Do he have two natures now? No. The only reason why he needed the human nature here to leave an example for us. He don't need a human nature now. Now the Bible said, are we the sons of God? See, now we have what he had, flesh and blood. And now by us having what he had, we have now the flesh and blood. Now are we the body of Christ. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we to show forth the pattern of good works. He got one nature now, and it fills heaven and earth. So when you pray to God, you got to pray to God and call on his name. That's what the Bible said. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Did you get me now, Chris? Hang around. You'll get more. One more question. Greetings, Pastor Jennings. Yes, sir. It's been a long time, Is 15 that years. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Panama. Thank it's you for coming a, back to it's Houston. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Are you back home? Yes, sir. Are you back home? You no, do know I'm, what well, I mean, that's, back that's, home. I have two quick questions. All right. My first question is, yes, sir. Uh, what does it mean when, when the Bible says that out of, out of uh, Paul's body came han handkerchiefs? And my second question yes, sir. is, um, I, I have to confess before the church that uh, I am a backslider, yes. and I would, I would love for you to pray for me. Yes, I do that. Thank you, sir. I do that. For you that don't know my brother, he was before Shade, Rick, Devin, Panama. One of my earlier brothers, probably back in the late 80s, 90s. He's been around a long time. And it is a pleasure to see my brother. Now let's go to work in the book of Acts about the handkerchiefs and the aprons that Paul got from his body. First in Acts chapter... And, 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 and let's see, are these preachers giving out these so-called blessed handkerchiefs right? Right. Listen good. Acts chapter 19 was started verse 11. Yes. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. All right. Special miracles was done. Hold it right there. So if special miracles was done, that lets you know Pastor Paul wasn't just giving out hands and neighbors all the time like the preachers are doing it. Right. In other words, he wasn't going around buying them from Sears or, or buying them from some store then 
praying over angels and giving them out. That's right. Listen to what it says. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. That what? So that from his body. Wait a minute. Where did this stuff come from? So that from his body. From the store. From his body. That lets you know it was something that he was wearing. From his body. Were brought unto the sick. Was brought to the sick. Handkerchief. Handkerchief. Or apron. Or aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the disease them. departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. So those, that was the material of what he had on. From his body. It was from his body, from actually his body. from the material that he had on. Not going by, like, like I got a handkerchief here, but that's not from my body. Right. If it's going to be from my body, it's going to be from the material I'm wearing. That's right. From his body. From the body. From his body. And just like the woman with the issue of blood, notice uh, she touched the garment that Jesus was wearing yeah. on his body. That's right. And he felt the virtue come out of him. That's right. Uh, so it isn't like these preachers are doing selling silk handkerchiefs <laughs> no. and all that rubbish to make money. No. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. So if, uh, yes, God can work through the material or that a man of God wear. Yeah. And that's why you can't do anything in your clothes. That's right. Hmm? That's right. You, can't, you can't do anything yeah. in your clothes. No. You can contaminate what you wear because I, I, have, I have experienced this scripture mm. on several occasions. Mm. I remember there was a woman that had a bad case of cancer and uh, she read this scripture and believed it. And she sent me a letter and asked, well, Pastor Dennis, please send me a piece of garment that he wear. Yeah. And I got a piece of my clothing and tore it and sent it to her. And she was diagnosed with stage three cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she got it, she, later on, she went for treatment and it baffled the doctors mm -hmm. because it was all gone. That was, that was miracle. simply a, a special miracle. Special miracle. miracle. Special miracle. Hallelujah. That credit don't go to me. A special miracle. Special miracles. Uh, does God do it all the time? No. No. I had one man say if there's apostles now, everybody would be healed. Ain't no Bible said that. And he wrote in his letter that the apostles, when they was here, everybody was healed. That's a lie. That's a Pastor lie. Paul and the apostles went somewhere, and Paul wrote a letter and said, Salute brother so-and-so, who I left sick. Sick, that's right. I left him sick. I want you to find that real quick Amen. for me. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, and yes, I get a chance to restore. I, I get a chance to restore your back. In fact, every backslider. Now, let me explain what backsliding means. A backslider is one that have departed from God, not just one that sinned. Because when you sin, you fall. That's right. There's fall and there's fall away. Two different things. There's fall and there's fall away. When you sin, you fail. You, you fail. But when you fall away, you depart from the Lord. You're not walking with him no more. And uh, you're not serving him no more. You're not living the way you're supposed to live. And you're not in the church. You're not in the body of Christ no more. And the Bible says... Uh, ye which are overtaken in a fault, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. You got to pray over him. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness and consider yourself. That means when I pray over you, I can't look down on you. I got to consider myself lest I also be tempted. So in you that backslid, you need to come back to God and uh, walk with the word of God. And you that never been baptized right You've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You no more baptized than a duck can preach. <laughs> you was baptized wrong. The Baptist baptized wrong. The Catholic do. The Methodist do. The Presbyterian do. The Bible said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus said in Matthew 20 and 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I'm a father. I got a name. I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a husband. I'm a preacher. I'm a fighter. But I got a name. My name is Jennings. The name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Alpha, Omega, beginning, the ending, the first, the last, the rose of sharing, the, living, the lily of the valley, the Lamb of God, the rock, the highest, the stone. The name is Jesus, and he's the Christ. Are you getting me?
In the book of Philippians. Real quick. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, we'll start at verse 25. Follow me. Yet I suppose it necessary to send you Ephroditus. Yes. My brother and companion in labor. Yes. And fellow soldier, but your messenger. Uh -huh. And he that ministered to my wants. Yes. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness. Yes. Because that she had heard that he had been sick. He heard that he'd been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. Uh -huh. But God had mercy God on him. God had mercy on him. Not on him only. Not only him only. But on me also, lest I should sorrow upon sorrow. So yes, the apostles didn't heal everybody. When you, I can pray over you, but it has to be God's will to heal you. That's right. Some of the apostles didn't you a healer? No. No. It ain't no man is a healer. God is a healer. That's right. Man can pray, but it takes God to move. That's if right. God don't move, you will die with the condition. Amen. Are you listening? All right, let's close out with Acts 2.38. Houston, 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 Houston. Amen. All of you that bow your head and raise your hands, you've never been saved. Amen. You that been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you've never been saved. You that went to some Catholic church and some preacher threw water on you, you should have threw it back on them. You ain't never been saved. All right. Here's a, here, here, here's a catch. Some of you have been baptized in Jesus' name. You've been baptized wrong. Yeah. What, Pastor Jesus? Yes, if you've been baptized simply in Jesus' name, yeah. you're baptized wrong. Right. Nobody in the Bible been baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah. They were baptized in Jesus Christ yeah. or Lord Jesus. Why not just Jesus' name? Because there's more than one Jesus in the Bible. Right. You got in the Old Testament, as I said, the brother of Esau. Or rather, the brother of Jacob, who was Esau, and Adabic, Esau, that name is Jesus. You got Moses' minister, Joshua, in Hebrew, is Yahshua, that name is Jesus. In the New Testament, you got a man named Bar Jesus, whom the Bible name is called him El Elumus. The Bible said, who was a Jew. It, 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 Bar Jesus, his name is Jesus. Right. And you also got one whom the Bible says is a fellow laborer of, uh, with Apostle Paul. His name is Jesus Justice. Yeah. So if you just was baptized in Jesus' name, which Jesus do you got? That's right. Well, do you got Bar Jesus? Mm. Do you got Jesus Justice? Mm. Do you got uh, Jacob's brother? <laughs> or do you got Moses' minister? Peter said, repent. Repent and be baptized. How? Every one of you. You got to repent. Many of you been baptized and ain't never repent. You got baptized for the wrong reason. Some of you got baptized when you was a child. Your mother or, or some old drunken preacher told you, if you want to sing on the choir, you got to be baptized. So when a preacher asks you to be baptized, you raise your hand, you got baptized, you ain't never repented. Sure. You got baptized to please your girlfriend. You got baptized so your wife can stop fussing with you. <laughs> you got baptized so your husband can stop beating on you. You got baptized for the wrong reason. You got to repent. When repent. you repent, you're sorry for your wrong. Right. You are convicted in your heart about oh, yeah. your wrong, oh, yeah. and you're ready to make a change. Then Peter Glory said unto them. God, and when you are ready to make that change, the gospel that you hear us preach, Go by God's permission, that same message that God gives the apostles will prick your stubborn prick your heart. heart. That's right. Eh? That's right. Thank God, and you are asked, where's water? Men and brethren, and men what and shall brethren, we do? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. No, Peter said, join the church. Repent. Get on the morning's bench and get several different works of grace. Repent. Bow your head and raise your old dirty hands and accept Christ where you are. Repent. repent. Just believe in your heart and you are saved. Repent. Repent. That's it. Repent and be baptized. How, how, how much here in Houston? Every one of you. Wait a minute. How many here in this auditorium got to obey this? Every one of you. How many got to obey this? Every one of you. Well, Pastor Jennings, don't wait on my wife. You was born without her. You're going to die without her. That's right. But Pastor, you don't wait on my husband. Your husband ain't God. The Bible says save yourself. That's right. What did it say? Repent. Repent. And be baptized. Glory every one of God. you. Glory to God. Every, every, God is talking here. Every one of you. God is talking here. Don't you let this opportunity pass you by, Houston. Thank you. That's why we're here. That's right. Glory to God that grab you by your horns and wrestle you down to God's word. Go ahead. Eh? Repent. I have folks ask me, are you going to start a church here in Houston? God be my helper. Yes, we are. Amen. God be my helper. God be my helper. Amen. Glory to God. 
Amen. Do you hear this? Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Everything. If you want to escape hell, you got this to obey. That's right. If you want to, I don't care if you, I don't care how cute you think you are. If you got more curves than 95, 295, 85, Route 1, all the highways of Houston. Amen. That's a lot of curves. Amen. You better wrap them hips up and get ready to obey what the Bible said mm -hmm. before the God of heaven snatch your soul out of your body. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent, hardhead, stubborn, repent. beer guzzler, cigarette smoker. You got these cigarette so smoking Christians. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Some of you came here smoking all the way in your car. Before you got out, you loaded your mouth with tit tacks and... <laughs> That's the devil out of hell. Some of you are beer drinking so-called Christians and got beer in your house, got a bar in your house. But brother, when this gospel comes, you'll throw all your liquor yes, you out. Will. You'll get rid of Jack and Daniel. What did the Holy Ghost say? Then Peter said unto them, repent, repent. and be baptized. Who? Every one of you. How must it be done? In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, it take God in the name of Jesus Christ for what? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins removed. That's how you get your sins washed away. And God promised by telling you, he said, you feel you? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the Ghost. promises unto you and to your children and to them that is afar off, even as many the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort. What should Houston do? Saying, say. Save yourself. What should Houston do? Save yourself. How many here want to go to hell? How many here are so tough? So, so tough. tough. <laughs> How many here are so tough you want to go to hell? Amen. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Oh, you're wise. Amen. How many here want to be right with God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Stand on your feet, Houston. Stand on your feet, Houston. You want to be right with God, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Isn't that wonderful? All, all of you that are standing, you see them two brothers back there? All of you go march that direction right there. All of you that are standing. Amen. That goes for preachers too. You might as well, you ain't baptized. You might as well get ready to go. Glory to God. Huh? Hallelujah. Repent. Repent. If you ain't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you got to get it. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The, Tr the Trinitarians, ain't none of them ever baptized you right. So when you're baptized, you're baptized all wrong. You might as well get ready to pack up and get yourself baptized. My God, the whole building about to be empty. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Oh, and thank God. Hallelujah. These are the works of the apostles, you know. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Everything, everything. This is what I mean. You got an instant church everywhere instant we go. Church. Amen. We baptize more in one day than these men are doing in 50 years. The Bible said repent. Repent and be baptized. <laughs> Glory to God. Matt, Matt, what, what's my brother's name over here? John. John, you got the camera zoom. I want the world to see how hey, Houston, hey. Houston is getting ready to walk with the word of God. Houston! Glory to God. This is the thing. This is the thing. This is the greater thing. Now you can give that to one of the brothers there. So just give it to one of the brothers. The Bible said repent. Repent and be baptized every one of every you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sin. And you shall. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. They're going to be baptized tonight. They're going down in water tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. And again I say, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll be back on tomorrow. Don't you go to your church. You better not step foot in your church at all. I got to get Houston organized now and find a temporary place to meet so we can gather our brothers and sisters because if I tell you leave your church, I got to try to set up a place so you can have a place of refuge to go to. Oh, yeah. Amen. I got, I got my work cut out for me everywhere in the world we go. This is the results we get everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere people are sincere, don't want to go to hell, getting tired of being lied to, and they are sick and tired of playing church, and they're tired of the preachers playing with them. That's right. Go ahead, I ain't God. Who can change? Who can say the hand of God is not, not in this? this? Amen. Huh? Amen. Only God Almighty.
mighty. Hallelujah. Glory to take God can do a marvelous work like this. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Come on back tomorrow. Panama, come on up. Glory to God. We're going to ask everyone to stand. Let me pray for my brother. And now I'm going to pray for my brother that I've backslid. Not 